Okay, hi my friends. So we are going to be moving on our civilizational discourse next to um, the, you know, the second River Valley civilization. And this comes chronologically, right? Uh, uh, in that, in that uh, you know, Mesopotamian farming and cultivation and so on and so forth seems to have started earlier, right? If you remember, uh, as early as eighteen, uh, as eight thousand BCE, right? Uh, they they had domesticated plants and whatnot. Anyway, uh, we are moving now to the second civilization, and then that is the River Valley civilization of. Um, Egypt in Africa, right? Uh, and and what I want you to keep in mind um, at the outset here, right, is that um, the 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 history of Africa, um, well, it, I mean, um, the Egypt, let's say, uh, in Africa, right, is closely, closely con connected to the story of Nubia. Right in Africa, but what is what 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 happened when in the again in the um, well in um, let me tell you a little story here in seventeen um, ninety eight, right um, the um, Napoleon right um, the 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 French occupied Egypt. Right. This is the this is the beginning. You know, French Revolution has already happened in seventeen um, eighty nine, right? And in seventeen ninety eight, um, right? Um, they um, they they conquer um, Egypt, and they see the riches of Egypt. They see, you know, they they they. They, they come and see the, the I mean of course they had already seen from since the Greeks right the, the Greeks were started writing and being uh, infatuated with the riches of 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 Africa in this case Egypt and Nubia right already um, already um, in the in the in the fifth century but in the modern period, right, this is the age of colonialism, right, and 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 the West has just uh, sort of well has not just discovered the East, right, but but uh, but the West has become uh, a power, right, the the power relationship between the East and the West basically changes at the beginning of the. Uh, modern period, which we usually count from the French Revolution. So anyway, these these um, the when the when the when Napoleon and the French went into Egypt, right? Shortly after that, and this uh, there starts a phenomena. Shortly after that, i.e., in eighteen o one, right? Um, the British um, have a, have. A, a, a war against the against the um, French and and come and take over the British right um, Egypt right and my my friends this is this is when when you're talking about your modern period right I hope you go and take courses in of. Uh, 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 on your on the modern period of of history, and I hope you realize that when you put it in the context, when you put what is happening in Western Asia currently, right, in the context of this colonial history of um, you know nineteenth and twentieth century, then you realize where is um, the so called. Um, anger, right, is, is is coming coming from. So the British come into Egypt in eighteen o one, and they do not leave Egypt in nineteen fifty six. Until nineteen fifty six, right, 
uh, where we talked about uh, Nasser and in the in the geography uh, section that we talked about about Nasser and the dam that he um, created and and the, the nationalization of Suez and how he wanted to establish a secular um, sort of Arab uh, Arab Arab rule in the Fertile Crescent, but um, powers to be did not let that happen and then um and then the secular history of western asia in the in the in the um, modern period right the secular the history of secularization of western e uh, asia modernization and um secularization of western um uh, uh, western asia um is um is uh, is 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 uh, it was very much there right until it was destroyed right by the the uh, basically the new i mean the imperialism that continues between world war 1 and world war 2 anyway um so to go back to our um our our story okay uh, so i want you to uh, to keep in mind this 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 background that i i have briefly talked about right the 19th century imperial history when when the french went into egypt and saw all the all the amazing riches and and heritage and tradition of of uh, of Egyptians and began to began to um, sort of um, uh, began to uh, co-opt it, i.e., take it as their own. In the sense that this is what I wanted to tell you, right? Is that while the history of uh, Egypt was closely connected in one of the, your videos. Um, I will um, I will put up. You will see. Uh, while the history of Egypt was closely connected to Nubia, right? Um, that uh, it, to Nubia, right? Egypt was co-opted basically as a white right civilization, while Nubia became. African civilization um, sort of per se right and 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 as it was Africa, it was not thought about as much or not given enough credence until recently the history of Nubia right um, compared to the history of Egypt now we realize that. It, as we will see, Egypt could not have existed without Nubia and 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 the regions uh, to the east of um, Nubia, specifically Ethiopia here, right? Okay. For one thing, the sources of the uh, of uh, of the Blue Nile, as we we uh, know we noted, comes from Ethiopia. Okay. So, uh, so we're going to concentrate on uh, Egypt, and I'm going to briefly again talk about the the um, the geography of it that we have gone over of it over it already, right? And um, what I want you to keep in mind, uh, besides the fact that we you 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 know now, right, that um, that Lake Victoria. Um, Lake Victoria here is um, is uh, is is um, you know is in basically in Eastern Africa, and we will we will go and look at the map of Africa a, a little bit here um, shortly, right? Um, so Blue Nile and and White Nile joining together for one thing comes from. Um, you know, um, sort of southern Nubia, right? Uh, well, in, in fact, um, upper 
well, in southern Nubia, let's say southern Nubia for now, right? Um, I just want us to go now um, where I told you that it, we should go uh, if it's possible here. And I, I want to um, go on the, um, on the map uh, with you. Oh, excuse me. I don't know what happened here. We'll figure it out here. Maps, right? I want to go on the map with you. And once we go on the map, I want us to go to Africa. By the way, I told you, my friends, right? If you want to get the 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 real... Uh, a sort of size of the continents, right? You have to go to the globe, right? And on the globe, you will see, you know, the, the actual sizes of um, what is what. And here is Africa, the second great, um, great um, sort of um, continent, right? And, and you see that uh, Lake Victoria here, uh, is is um, sort of um, shared by southern Sudan, right? Um, yeah, uh, by Kenya, Tanzan and and Tanzania, right? And the source of the Nile comes here. But I also want you to just look at the map, my friends, right? Look at the map of 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 Africa. And, and pay attention, right? Um, most of you probably know uh, a lot more about Europe, right, than you know about Asia. Uh, you, you, you know a lot more uh, about Europe um, than you know about Asia and Africa, right? So, so I want you to pay attention to the map of Africa, right? And I want you to, to see right on 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 the map here um if i go on the topography the map of the topography of the region right um you will see that it is partly cloudy um now in in tropical africa right so so you think africa and you you think okay no water right first of all the greatest water of uh, one of the greatest rivers uh, on 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 earth 4000 miles long right and uh, runs through this northeastern corner of it to just begin with there are other major rivers as well right but you see that it is not yeah well for uh, for one thing africa is a continent surrounded therefore by by water right and and therefore access right um especially in this part of it right the part of ethiopia this horn of africa right um to to saudi arabia you see to the east of it and and the body of water that you see in between is the red sea and you can see actually that you know how pangea broke up here right because it's like a jigsaw puzzle you can put um, the Arabian Peninsula, i.e. Saudi Arabia, right? Um, you can uh, try to sh shove the two uh, plates of land together like a jigsaw puzzle, and then you will connect uh, Asia and and uh, Africa, right? Well, and they are s still connected, right? Through this peninsula, little peninsula that is called the Sinai Peninsula. God knows, um, you know, well, anyway. Uh, so, so, but, but, so you see, not only is it, uh, not only does it have this great river, not only ha it has tropical uh, land, uh, but, but you have to keep in mind also that it was at some point, yeah, around 6,000 um, BCE, right, um, the what was what now you see you see you see as desert land right where where tunisia morocco algeria libya oops um oh 
Kamran. Allow. Oh, no, but I don't want to go to my current location. Okay, my friends, this is... Okay. That was kind of silly, wasn't it? I didn't need my current location. I We wanted beautiful Africa. Oh. Okay, wait, you guys. Just bear with me. Here we go. Okay, we are in the oceans. That's why. Okay, here we go. Okay, forgive me for that interruption. Okay, so as you can see from the topographical map, uh, well... Uh, you cannot see it at the moment, right? Because the, you, there is desert land, right? But by, uh, by uh, you know, before um, 6000 BCE, right? Where the, when the monsoon rains, right? In the uh, Indian Ocean began to change, uh, change course. And therefore, you know, the temperature of the continent and the temperature of the waters became different, right? At any point, at any rate, to, um, climatic conditions um, led to the to the to the change in the in the rainfall, right? That would come towards the continent of Africa, right? And uh, around 6000 BCE, you begin to get to get a desertification of what was once lush Africa, right? Uh, but and and you have to keep in mind that when you talk about deserts, my friends, right? Underneath these deserts, there are the evidence of this lushness, right? Are the waters that are underneath the deserts, actually, that, of course, need human power to be accessed and are very expensive to access and so on and so forth um, for modern man, right? So the, the, the desertification of Africa took place with the result that, okay, uh, with the result that uh, the Sahara, right, the Sahara, um, i.e. basically the desert, right, uh, was created uh, in, uh, in parts of um, North Africa, right? Um, so, and, and, but, but it is not just desert and lush, right? There is also a territory called uh, the Sahel, which le literally means coast in Arabic. My Arab um, students, Arab uh, back students with Arabic, Arab background would know that already, right? So, but now you know it also, right? We are talking Sahel in Arabic means coast. Right, and that is the land between the desert and the tropical, um, humid savannas, um, to the, to the west. They are semi-arid regions, right, of western and uh, and um, uh, central, um, central um, Africa, right, north central Africa. Okay, so now, so that is, uh, and one other thing that I want you to keep in mind, yeah, my friends, is that, okay, precisely because of these deserts, right, on these two sides of the Nile, which forced the populations to come to the Nile, right, and settle in the, in the Nile, right, by about around 5000 BCE, right, 
uh, get their settlements. But 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 you look at Africa, and you will you you see that it is a rather self-contained um, sort of um, continent, if you will. Right? Um, yes, it is connected to. Asia, right? But the Sinai Peninsula was was kind of harsh to cross, right? And we will see an Egypt for the for the most part, and uh, during its early history, as we will see, um, kept its isolation uh, from the outside world. It was predominantly, um, right, um, sort of um, looked. Um, to itself and southwards, right, um, and the riches of Nubia, as 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 we discussed, right. But of course, there were when once trade comes, once Egypt gets involved in trade, right, um, then familiarity comes, right, and uh, and uh, the wealth goes out, the the you know the 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 sort of the fame of the riches goes out, um, connections are established, and so on and so forth, and uh, and um, once Egypt becomes connected, right there comes the invasion of Hyksos, which we will get to, right. Um, now okay so um so that as that is as oh so so one other thing so so um okay but but nevertheless egypt looked southwards on some levels but because the nile right uh, sort of basically um sort of um ran north northward Right. Uh, remember, uh, the Nile uh, runs into the Mediterranean Sea, right? Um, and and that's why we we uh, call this uh, lower. Excuse me. Uh, we call this part um, lower Egypt, and. This part upper, right? I mean, this part's upper, right? And so, so uh, because it is, it move, it moves to the north. It runs to the north, right? Uh, uh, also, the 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 trade, also the trade of Nubia, for instance, right? It looks to the north, but it also looks to the east, as we will see later on, right? Um, so, um, so, but, but, uh, pay attention that on the on both sides of the Nile you have the desert, right? Um, and then you see the in the in the western coast of um, Saudi Arabia, you see the mountains here, right? Which are called actually Hijaz, and they mean the barrier. This is another Arabic word that you're learning, my friends. Uh, where are we? Okay. Um, and you see that there are mountains on the western coast of Saudi Arabia and mountains on the eastern coast of, um, of Egypt. The IE, right, Egypt is really not not pre, uh, pre, penetrable, right? Um, by uh, from the east side, from the uh, for, I'm sorry, from the east side, from the west side, right? And um, and also from the north side, because the ships that want to come to to be able to um, sort of settle uh, enter into shallow waters. Right, so they could not really conquer Egypt from the north, so uh, so to speak, right? Uh, but of course, uh, uh, Egypt could go south, and the southerners, the Nubians, could come north, right? Um, and in fact, 
here lied the point of interconnection uh, between North Africa and Central Africa, if you will, right? So, so um, okay, um, so meaning that Egypt, unlike Mesopotamia, right? Unlike Mesopotamia, that could uh, that could see populations coming also from the mountains here and uh, from Anatolia, right? Uh, from Caucasus, uh, from desert areas. Unlike Anat uh, unlike Mesopotamia, right? Um, Egypt was rather protected. Right, and of course we 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 talked about this. The Nile was the life source of of the um, of 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 Egypt, with the difference that unlike Mesopotamia, where Tigris and Euphrates were were open to sudden flooding, as we said, yeah, the flooding of the Nile was. Um, like precise, almost precise, right? Uh, you could you could uh, measure time. You could measure uh, sort of seasons by it, right? And because it came right um, during the summer, um, the uh, the flooding of the Nile came during the summer seasons when the um, when the um, when um, when the, the seeds had already been planted, right? Um, and and um, and um, you know, um, and and then the flood comes and brings nutrients, and uh, you know, uh, very steady and calm flood comes, brings nutrients and the silt, right? Uh, and so on and so forth. So here too, right, in Egypt too, nevertheless, in order to use the water, right, you need the technology of the canals and whatnot, and of course you have shipping to go uh, north and uh, south through, through the Nile, right, whereas the Nile itself ran northwards, the winds uh, came uh, southwards, right? So in that case, uh, the shipping, what shipping went down the Nile, um, could could have the winds behind it, right? And nevertheless, shipping was possible, right? And we know that well, whereas the 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 source of the uh, the whereas the excuse me, one of the plants that were that was basically life life sustaining on some level in Mesopotamia was the the reeds, right? In the Nile, uh, right, it was papyrus, right? And the plant of papyrus which was put to uh, a number of uses including to the purpose of writing, right, as we, we shall see. So a brief note about the languages of Africa, right? You, my friends, we, we, we remember that we talked about uh, the Afro-Asiatic group of uh, um, sort of um, languages of Africa, right? But if you look at the map of languages, linguistic map of Africa in front of you, you see that the Afro-Asiatic, right, the brown ones, right, uh, is is only part of, although, albeit a, a large part of, 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 of the language of Africa, right? Um, but there are many other languages in Africa, right? The Khoi San uh, language, uh, as far as we know, we I, we have not been. It is it is also an isolate language. I think if I if I'm not um, if I'm not wrong, don't don't quote me on on that, my friends. But okay, but you have your Afro Asiatic um, languages, right? But you also have your Niger, right? I mean, you get your Algeria is here, um, then Niger and Nigeria, right? Uh, um, 
to the south and southwest of uh, Algeria, right? And and Congo, right? Around here, right? And and Congo B, right? Um, you see that they 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 make the um, Niger Congo A and Niger Congo B languages, right? And then you see that um, you know Nubia, Sudan, uh, and even even um, parts of of um, of um, southern Libya, right? Um, speak Nilo. Uh, Saharan, right, uh, languages. And then uh, you have in Madagascar, right, this is Madagascar, right, my friends, Madagascar, right, this island that appears as a result of the breakup of the, of the Pangean, uh, Pangea, and you see it's called Austronesian, right, uh, yeah, um, um, Austria, right, and Asia, right? It's a combination of the lang languages spoken in Austria and Asia. So you, 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 you say you can tell that um, um, so uh, you can tell at which point of the breakup, right, um, this this piece of land moved westwards, right, um, in this case. Anyway, so, and let's clean up this one as well, okay. Um, so, uh, here again, once again, right, um, your languages, right, Arabic, right, and Tuareg, um, Hausa, right, and... Um, yeah, that uh, this was. I mean, the yellow remains Niger Congo, A and B, right? And uh, and uh, yeah, a part of uh, Libya, right? Um, is is uh, becomes Nilo Saharan and so on and so forth, right? Uh, and so here you have a uh, um, uh, yeah the uh, uh, Again, the breakup of the languages, right? And uh, just for our, for I mean, we will not get to to discuss this, right? But we 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 think of Africa, and then we think of okay, this. I mean, we don't think usually Africa and Egypt, right? I mean, we have to be reminded that hello, Egypt is in Africa, but you would think that okay, there was this three thousand year civilization, and then it was dead, and then nothing happened. Well, of, of course, that is far, far from the truth, as we can see. But for the purposes of the period that we will not cover, I want you to uh, to notice that this trans-Saharan trade, right, which was always there uh, on some level, right, created uh, the the. Uh, major empires of Western Africa, empire of um, Ghana, right, where the first one, right, which went from seventh uh, to thirteenth century, and I forgive me for uh, for this, it it doesn't um, appear so clearly, and Mali, right here, Mali, which went from thirteenth uh, to sixteenth century and which 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 traded right the the riches of africa right um along uh, you know north south um i'm sorry north south east west and so on and so forth and uh, with the result that you know comes 15th 16th century right and the new world is is discovered, so called. You know, I mean, you have to imagine that the Americas continues westward, my friends, right? And yeah, and and the new world is created, and then um, you know you need a population as a as a workforce, right? 
and then uh, as a as a as a major workforce, right? And then you have the um, the beginning of slavery in Americas, right? Um, and 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 the and 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 the and you know and the beginning of the uh, I mean Africa and the resources of Africa. I mean Egypt had always has always throughout its history been the granary, right? Um, for I mean when once Europe begins to take shape. Uh, or, or where, let's say, uh, no, forget about once Europe begins to take shape. Once, you know, the the uh, ancestors of Western civilization, the, the good old Greeks and Romans appear on the scene, right? Um, you know, they, they were fed by Egypt, right? Um, they could not sustain itself themselves had it not been for Egypt. So um, anyway, had it not been for Africa. Anyway, so let's go to, uh, you know, a, a, a very, um, very um, sort of uh, overview, bird's eye view of the chronology, right? Um, uh, what I, I want you to remember right here is that we begin by the early dynastic period in Egypt, right? And then it we go to the um, Old Kingdom period, right? So er, early dynastic and Old Kingdom all together kind of a millennia, right? Because they go to from 3100 BCE to 2100 BCE, right? At which point... Yeah, you have the first intermediate period where Egypt, as we will see, goes through chaos, right? And then, uh, and and that um, that that also um, lasts for about I mean that lasts for about a century, right? Uh, until you get the Middle Kingdom and you have again prosperity, right? Uh, with the Middle Kingdom. Uh, when uh, at the end of which and Ma Middle Kingdom also goes for a good half a century, right? At the end of which, again, you have a period of chaos, the second intermediate period, right? Um, where, um, where, again, decentralization and, um, you know, and Egypt loses its connection to Nubia and so on and so forth, and we will get to that. And then um, comes the new kingdom, which is the phase where um, after Egypt becomes uh, connected to the out, out, outside world uh, through the um, through the um, sort of Hyksos invasion, uh, which we will get to. Okay, my friends. So that is the um, that is the um that is the general um idea so now if we go to the chronology the more a little bit more detailed chronology of egypt yeah my friends you will see that um well i mean you have um the old kingdoms begins by um by di by dynasty um, three, right? But there is the the dy dynasty one and two that comes before that, right? And and then the old kingdoms, as you can see, goes to three, you know, dynasty three, dynasty four, dynasty five, dynasty six, and then we hit the first intermediate period, and you you, you if just generally you. Uh, you look at this um, this uh, um, sort of um, chronology, and you, we will see that in the dynasty three, the second king, yeah, Djoser, right during his time, the one of the first monumental step pyramids of of uh, of Egypt is is created. I e there is an articulation already of an afterlife 
and and um, and uh, you have monumental architecture, right? Meaning that you have a lot of surplus of wealth, um, right? And um, and we will see you get writing and so on and so forth, right? Um, dynasty three, dynasty four are very very become very very um, important, and then. Um, after the first intermediate period, dynasty eight and ten, yeah, are lost, are, are you know, are functioning basically during the first intermediate um, period, and then um, comes um, dynasty eleven, right? But in the second half of the Middle Kingdom is where you get. Um, uh, I mean, um, I mean, it, it is in the in the 12th dynasty of Middle Kingdom that you get the golden age of, uh, of, um, of uh, Egyptian civilization, so to speak, right? So dynasty 12 is very, very important, right? Dynasty 1 and 2 are very important. For, I mean, all of them, of course, are Im important and they lead to one another and what happens in the meantime is very, very important. But we could spend a whole course on that, right? And um, I'm just giving you a, um, a, an important snapshot, I hope, right? And then the New Kingdom... Uh, 18 kingdom, 18 dynasty, again becomes an important dynasty, as we will um, see, because um, this is a new phase of, um, of, of Egypt, to which we will get um, later, my friends, right? So going back to our, um, our, um, our uh, slide uh, presentation, um, you know, you notice that here we 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 uh, we see that this dynastic divi uh, divisions by which we are going uh, through today were not the ones that you know. I mean, people in the old kingdom they did not consider themselves old kingdom, of course, right? Uh, and uh, and so on, and you know the first intermediate period, and so on and so forth, until the new kingdom, right? Um, all of this, right? This this arrangement, therefore, must have happened, right? Um, after all of these things has happened, right? After um, even the new kingdom has come and gone, right? New kingdom because why new kingdom? Because they're closer to uh, to us chronologically, right? Um, so. Um, this uh, dynastic division actually was created by an Egyptian priest named Maneto in the third century B third century BCE, right? Um, where he wrote a history of uh, Egypt, right? Maneto's history, the first history of Egypt, and he he uh, uh, called it. Aegyptic Tiaka, right? Because in the third millennium um, BCE, right, uh, Egypt was going, as we will see, through its Hellenistic phase, right? So one of the languages of importance had become um, the Greek language, right? And um, and um, hence the uh, the the word Aegypta which has actually uh, 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 an Egyptian root, right, um, that was sort of um, Hellenized, so to speak, by Manetto, right? So um, what happens, so now we get to the, um, the, the, the early dynastic period, right, um, and you see that you have already in the early dynastic period the creation of gnomes, right? Gnomes or or um, or uh, or uh, provinces in Egypt, right? And we will come to see what they look like uh, in Egypt. Um, so 
and 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 as we will see in the early dynastic period, right? Remember dynasties one and two, right? Is when Upper and Lower Egypt, right, are united, right? Upper and Lower Egypt were not united prior to this, right? And uh, one of the things that I want you to remember about the Nile, right, is that after it comes out, uh, after uh, sort of uh, it joins together to become the Nile, it, it, there, are, there are hurdles on its way, right, which are called cataracts. Right, and there are a series of these uh, cataracts which made um, actually, you know, um, shipping on the Nile um, from, you know, from because of these cataracts from Upper Egypt to Lower Egypt difficult, right? Uh, and uh, and um, so that hence hence the the. Uh, the division of Egypt, right, so to speak, um, into upper and lower, right, um, and uh, but these two upper and lower province, um, you, you know, regions of Egypt are 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 co come together in the early dynastic period, right, in the early dynastic period, in the early dynastic period, of course, is also sort of. Uh, formed right the 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 context for the the, for the the early dynastic period obviously provides the immediate history for the old kingdom um, period right which we said go from dynasties three to six right and this is it is here right already cities have appeared you know the processes that we talked about in 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 with regards to mesopotamia right villages um the you know domestication of of all of this is has happened already you know um ag agricultural intense in 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 intensive agriculture, surplus production, gradually cities are, are developing, right, in, 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 in Egypt. And it is at this point that you begin to get your writing, uh, you begin to get your belief in afterlife, right, uh, whereas the most, and and the differences and we will when when I talk about the relig religion, uh, we will we will see the differences between uh, the notions of afterlife with of uh, um, of of uh, Egyptians as opposed to Mesopotamians, right? Um, for the Egyptians, as we will see. Um, life was good, right? Life was reliable. Um, nature was was magnanimous, right? And and you were protected, right? And 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 therefore, um, you know, death was only momentarily, right? It, it was a momentarily phenomenon because your life continued in the afterlife and you needed your body for the purpose right therefore you get to the process of mummification which is which is extremely scientific mind you right because it has to deal with chemicals when you're talking about um about construction of pyramids right i mean you have to imagine the kind of engineering feat that that is whereas in mesopotamia you had you know you had um uh, in mesopotamia you had a uh, baked baked um uh, bricks right mud bricks right here you're dealing with stones and and these these um in amazing pyramids, uh, you know, the first one of which uh, that was created by Djoser, um covers uh, sort of like 16 hectares or something like that, right? You have to imagine what organization of labor this requires, what feat of engineering, what feat of mathematics, right? Uh, and so on and so forth. And you have to imagine why, I mean, you have to question why are they pyramidical in shape, 
right? And what is, what does that mean? And and whose tombs are these anyway? And who would have so much money to to construct uh, to construct um, uh, sort of um, uh, pyramids and and so on and so forth? And the answers that you 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 give to these right uh, shows you that by the old kingdom how how. Uh, how developed, right, um, uh, sort of Egyptian civilization had had become. Uh, okay, there are differences. Uh, you know, when when you're talking about writing hieroglyphics, right, actually means sacred. Hmm? Hiero. Um, glyphics, right? Sac sacred writing, right? Um, writing, so it, it it was an as opposed. Although they also needed um, writing for the purposes of accounting, right? But in the case of um, in Egypt, right, um, the the language basically developed obviously by the priests, right, uh, for the um, for the priests and the population at large, right, um, and and. Um, and um, well, for the for the priests, no, we will get to population at large, right? Uh, for the priests and um, and uh, and um, and it it was it was in order to uh, render sacred texts, right? And then you say you think why are the pyramids the way they are in 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 the middle of them a king. Uh, residing which later on becomes known as a pharaoh uh, uh, pharaoh o a o a h right uh, as a pharaoh meaning great house right um uh, great house um uh, so so the king is in in is entombed here, right, with all his riches and you know possibly attendance and food to eat and everything because you know he is going to go to an afterlife, right, and 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 his body needs to be prepared. Uh, you know, be be made ready, right? Be 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 such that it would continue, right? And uh, in the in the hereafter, and that you get to mummification, and we'll get to the procedure of it uh, later on, where where even the organs are kept intact intact for later uh, usage, right? Um, so, and you say, why is it pyramidical shape? Oh, well, the divine is usually up, up high, right? And, and, uh, and, uh, the rest are down below, right? And, and, and this is the tomb of the king. It connects to the divine. And on, as opposed to the, therefore you get the notion of kings, Right, Egyptian notion of kings, with, who are actually divine. They are king gods. They are god kings, right, so to speak. Right, unlike unlike the um, the 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 um, the um, sort of uh, Mesopotamian, their Mesopotamian uh, counterparts, who are the representatives of God. On earth, but they are not divine, right? In the, it is in the old kingdom also that you get trade with rich Nubia, and we will see how rich Nubia is in a second. Well, in the next um, session that I will create, and the prosperity of the old kingdom, right? And then comes the uh, the first intermediate period of dynasties eight through ten, right? Um, as we said before. Uh, the Middle Kingdom, right, is 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 um, is is contains the Golden Age, which is Dynasty uh, twelve, right. Whereas in the first intermediate period, um, whereas in the first intermediate period, um, the do, 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 um, yes. Um, you know, there was decentralization and Upper and Lower Egypt were separated, right? Uh, again, Upper and Lower Egypt 
uh, are is is uh, affected and most importantly you have the conquest of nubia right conquest of nubia and all its riches right and uh, and you have a capital that you have centralization therefore you create a capital thebes right and and so on and so forth right at the end of the middle kingdom here you get the hyksus invasion where we will stop uh, in our um, examination of of the first part of egyptian history uh, for module two so for this session i bid you farewell my friends and I will pick it up again in the continuation of our videos. Um, have a great rest of the day, rest of the evening, wherever and where, uh, whenever you're hearing me. Love you again. Bye.